always, the new year begins with a period of reflection upon the end of the year just gone, and I find my thoughts dwelling on those bloody Game Awards still. Probably because with E3 gone, it's the only high-profile, glitz-covered mutual masturbation session the industry has left to insolently force into our mainstream news feeds. All grousing about the ratio of ads and trailers to actual award givey outies aside, I find the award winners disappointingly easy to predict. I was about 90% right in my predictions this year, and I ain't bullshit neither. We did a Windbreakers podcast with Stephanie Sterling before the awards, where we announced our hot picks, so this is all backed up by video record. And now I would like to pass on my wisdom and explain my methods for game award winner predicting. Let's see if next December we can make some bookies some fucking money. Let's start with the big one, Game of the Year. Baldur's Gate 3 won, which was my prediction, and it is an undeniably good game, but get out of that mindset. Quality and rewarding the actually best game has got nothing to do with this. That's always going to be subjective and you can make up whatever bullshit logic you want to explain your choice. What this is actually about is pushing a narrative about the games industry in general. And when you look at the other nominees, Baldur's Gate 3 was quite simply the only title left that could possibly have won. Alan Wake 2, Tears of the Kingdom, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4 Remake, and Mario Wonder were the other nominees. Resident Evil 4 you can throw in the bin straight away. The Game Awards doesn't like remakes. Remember, this is about creating a narrative, and that narrative is thus. AAA games are great and only ever get better. Anything rooted in nostalgia, like a remake or indeed a 2D Mario game that might suggest that a previous era of games was better than the current one, is going to get passed over. For similar reasons, you can discount Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom, because the Game Awards also doesn't like expansion pack sequels. They're fine games, but they're built upon frameworks left by previous games, and it's the fully new and exciting that really drives clicks. That leaves Alan Wake 2 as the only reasonable contender. But I knew that wasn't going to win either. Why? Because it was going to win Best Game Direction. See, part of the narrative is that video games are also a creative, artistically valid medium. But the AAA industry can't shake its knee-jerk instinct to feel a bit iffy about artistry, as opposed to reliable committee design. The solution to this cognitive dissonance was the Best Game Direction Award, a separate award that always goes to the closest thing to a high-profile game that could be described as autistic driven something where you can point to one person and say this game is their vision. And with director Sam Lake's face being so unavoidable both in and around Alan Wake 2, it was the shoe-in. I admit I didn't expect it to also hoover up a best narrative and best art direction, but that was all in accordance with the same principle. Let's move on then to Best Indie Game, snapped up by Sea of Stars. Again, actual quality isn't what we're rewarding here, neither is the kind of sexy innovation and groundbreaking game design that only indie is capable of. What the Game Awards wants to reward here is aspiration. It wants to think of indie as the plucky little scrappy-doo sidekick to AAA's Scooby. As such, the restrictions against nostalgia are relaxed, and Best Indie Game is most likely to go to something that shows reverence to the establishment. Hence Sea of Stars, with its clear influence from Chrono Trigger on full display, and why in the past they've given it to milk toast games like Kena Bridge of Spirits just because it was trying to be a bog standard open world game like The Big Kids. As for best debut indie, I'll tell you what deserved to win, Pizza Tower. That was the game that dominated the conversation in indie circles this year, I know you assholes kept nagging me to review it, but just as the Game Awards rewards reverence from indies, it proportionally punishes any hint of subversion. It doesn't like post-punk attitudes, it doesn't like loosey-goosey MS Paint pixel art, because what is this whole ceremony if not an extended advert for the most expensive graphics hardware? So they gave it to Cocoon instead, and that's double bacon bullshit on a bun, because Cocoon was directed by Jep Carlson, who was the designer of Limbo and Inside, which makes him, if anything, a well-established veteran indie, not a debut creator. The studio was new, but it's still hardly in the spirit of a Best Newcomer award. It would have gone to Pizza Tower in every sensible universe. <laughs> Moving on. And another thing I called was Final Fantasy XVI winning Best Music, which I called because FF16 is one of those persistent legacy series that the Game Awards runners feel they have to acknowledge in some way, but awkwardly, it didn't deserve any awards for its story or gameplay. The Best Music and Best Audio Design have historically been used as the well we've got to give you something prizes for big games that can't be awarded anything else. Hi-Fi Rush winning Best Audio Design was an exception to that rule. Hi-Fi Rush rather cunningly backed the Game Awards into a corner here by being so centrally and effectively designed around its audio that nothing else could have credibly won. 
Now let's talk about the extremely unspecific genre-based awards that are always several scoops of rum and raisin bullshit. I've long since given up trying to get my head around what separates the Best Action Game nominees from the Best Action Adventure Game nominees. I guess Best Action tends to favour less narrative-focused, more combat-oriented gameplay, and for that reason Armored Core 6 winning was one of my successful predictions. But as for what qualifies a game as sim or strategy, who the fuck knows? There is one recurring trend here that informs my predictions, and that's that if one of the nominees in an unspecific genre category is a first-party Nintendo property, it's most likely going to win. Hence Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Wonder, and Pikmin 4 winning Best Action Adventure, Family Game, and Simstroke Strategy, respectively. Remember, a key part of the Game Awards narrative is sucking on establishment todger, and Nintendo is about as establishment as games companies get. Oh, enough grousing, Yahtzee, you're clearly full of criticism for the game awards, but we've yet to hear any suggestions on how to fix them. Fix them, viewer! It would need to want to be fixed first, and as far as the game awards are concerned, they're functioning exactly as intended, that is to say, sucking establishment todger. But if you're asking me what I'd change if I was running it, well, mostly common sense things, replace best debut indie with best newcomer and give it to a creator rather than a game, rephrase best indie game to a more concrete definition, like best game developed by a studio whose owner stroke CEOs actually work on the bloody games, and I'd chuck out the whole concept of awards based on genre. I mean, look at those Best Sim Stroke Strategy nominees again. I can't imagine a world in which it makes sense to pit Pikmin 4 against Cities Skylines 2. They're completely different games serving completely different audiences. How could you ask anyone to declare one better than the other? Besides, when you rate by genre, you're encouraging the pigeonholing of games, when so often it is the defying or combining of gameplay genres that makes games noteworthy in the market place of ideas. What is the gameplay genre of, say, Alan Wake 2? Action adventure? Survival horror? Detective puzzler? Wander around a bullshit horror dimension looking stupid with your mouth hanging open, M up? No, I've got a good idea for an alternative. I've been talking about this in various videos lately as a joke, but the more I think about it, the more sense it makes. I would categorise games not by genre, but by the emotions they're attempting to induce in the player. So my awards would be best game that made me feel powerful, best game that made me feel challenged, best game that made me feel clever, best game that made me scared, best game that made me cry. Oh. God, I just want to know you're in a happier place now, Alice the Hedgehog. But I acknowledge the role the Game Awards must play as the big money glitter fest representing the industry to the rest of the world, showcasing the most impressive and most expensively made games for a broad audience, and so a specific award will be set aside for the year's biggest AAA releases. And for the sake of complete openness, the award will be titled Best Game Whose Publisher Gave Me A Thousand Bucks To Say This. 2024 is here, which means new year, new you. No matter what your resolution may be, make sure you look good while doing it with our brand new line of Second Wind hats, hoodies, t-shirts, and more over at Shark Robot. Want to lose that belly fat? Wear your fully ramblematic hoodie and laugh at an industry that never learns anything. Tee hee hee. Oh, my sides. Planning to eat healthier? Cook up a meal fit for Dabarella Yeatster and an entire D&D group with your adventure is nigh jumper. Want to read more books? Go to the theater in your backdrop t-shirt. Movies! They're just like books, but better. Want your voice to sound more like Frost's? Well, that's probably not gonna happen, but look over there. It's a cold take ad. Head over to sharkrobot.com slash second dash wind or click on the link in the description to check out all the new merch today. Act fast because some of it is only available for a limited time, just like our fragile lives floating on a rock in a void of nothingness. How peaceful. <laughs>